Hi, Dr. Matthew Weiner. I'm a bariatric surgeon and weight loss expert in Commerce, Michigan. I'm here to talk to you about a question that I get asked by my patients probably two or three times a week, which is how do I prevent my stomach from stretching out after surgery? And in truth, this question, is, this lecture is really a little bit of a bait and switch because we have to not think about your stomach and stretching out and, as the major determinant of weight gain after surgery. Rather, we have to understand that this is a lot more than just anatomy. We have to move beyond restriction and malabsorption. Restriction is the impact that the surgery has in which you're able to eat very small bites of food and only eat a few bites before you feel full. Malabsorption is the idea that you're, you don't absorb the calories, they get wasted into your stool, and because of that, you end up losing weight. But what we're really finding out, and, and anyone who's watched any of my videos in the past, is that these are, are relatively minor impacts of the surgery over the long run, which is how we have to think about weight loss surgery. Instead, we have to think about the hormonal impact of these surgeries. And so when I talk to patients about their stomach stretching out, the first thing I explain to them is that that's not really what's happening when patients have an increase in their appetite and start to put, put weight back on after surgery. What we see in nearly every weight loss surgery patient is a progressive increase in their capacity for food. And patients oftentimes are very frustrated by this. I really try to emphasize when I'm meeting with new patients that this is a normal and expected finding. At one month, it's two or three bites of food. That's all patients are eating in order, before they feel satisfied. However, at about six months after surgery, you're really looking somewhere between three, four ounces. I have some patients who are able to eat more than that. At a year, it's a half of a plate of food. At three years, we're talking three quarters of a plate of food. And by five or 10 years after surgery, it's a full plate. Maybe before surgery, you could consume two plates of food before you'd feel very full. And now it's down to one, which is a substantial decrease. But we all understand that you can get in plenty of trouble from one plate of food. So we, we have to go into these surgeries recognizing that over time, the stomach will stretch, which is not what's really happening, but, what's, but as a result, what we see is a, a shift in the way that your brain and your, and your stomach and your intestines interact so that you become more tolerant of food intake. And that adjustment in not the size of your stomach or the size of the opening, but rather this relationship between your brain and your intestines, that's what is driving this increased capacity for food. It's normal and expected and one we have to plan for rather than try to fight against or, or get worried by. The first concept I talk to patients about when I discuss these concepts with them is that if we take food and coat it with a radio-opaque substance like barium and watch patients eat it after surgery, we see that in general, it will move very rapidly through the gastric pouch or through the sleeve into the intestines. And depending on whether you have a gastric bypass or a sleeve and how far out you are from surgery and how much swelling there is, um, we may see that the, the pouch or the sleeve may empty within anywhere from 30 seconds to a few minutes. But it's not hours and hours that the food is sitting in the stomach w making you feel full. This is not a, a simple matter of filling up a vessel and when it empties, then you start to become hungry again. Rather, what happens is as the food passes through, it triggers the stretch receptors in the stomach and in the intestine, and these stretch receptors feed back to your brain and, and provide you a feeling of fullness or satiety. It's a very rapid movement, and, and that explains the fact that we don't see huge differences when we make the gastric pouch a certain size, or even the gastric sleeve within some limit um, a, a different size. We don't see changes in patients' appetite, we don't see changes in their food tolerance, and we don't see changes in their long-term weight loss. In truth, weight regain after surgery has almost nothing to do with anatomy. We have tried this experiment and watched it fail multiple times. There's, over the past decade or so, there's been a big push to perform endoscopic plications at the gastric, of the gastric bypass, where they go in to the connection between the stomach and the intestine and will suture it or inject a sclerosing agent or do something to take this, this opening and narrow it down. And although we may in some studies see some short-term weight loss as a result of this, we never see long-term weight loss. 
And what we find is that this is really not a, a useful mechanism for driving additional weight loss after surgery. And in fact, in general, it's not the cause of weight regain after surgery. When I will perform endoscopies on patients years out from surgery, I'll find that in general their opening is fairly similar in size. I may see a patient who's reg regained a significant amount of weight. Their opening won't be any larger than someone who's managed to be successful with their weight loss over time. This is, again, not about anatomy. This is about hormones. This is about habits. This is about a number of things beyond just the size and shape of your stomach. So when, if we are going to examine why patients gain weight after surgery, we have to rec understand why they gain the weight in the first place because most often that's the same reason that you're regaining weight after surgery. So to kind of go over some of these causes, and I've addressed this in some other lectures um, more extensively and I won't go into detail, but I have highlighted some things that I see very often in my practice as causes of weight regain. These are things we have to nip in the bud, we have to jump all over. I typically will try to address them in the preoperative period rather than wait for them to become an issue postoperatively. But obviously they still need attention postoperatively too. Stress and depression is a very common cause of weight regain after surgery. This is a complicated topic. It's one um, that, that really does not have a lot of great options. However, I have found that exercise and yoga, which is really a form of exercise, are perhaps the most effective ways to manage stress in the long run. This is something I really encourage in my patients who report to me that they're emotional eaters or stress eaters. We also see medications as a major cause. Steroids, sleep agents, mood stabilizer, a lot of um, hormonal treatments. These medications oftentimes cause significant weight regain after surgery. And in fact, there's really nothing that you can do as an individual to prevent the weight gaining impact of these medications. You're powerless. This is not a matter of resisting the increased appetite that the medications cause. Rather, they trigger your body to store fat in excess of, where, of, of the rate it, it already is. And so any weight loss surgery patient, please review your medication list with your surgeon, with your primary care doctor, with a pharmacist, even go online and look, look this information up. It's widely available. And ensure that you are not on any medications that cause weight gain. And if you are, work with your physicians to try to, to optimize your medication regimen so that it doesn't cause weight gain. But these, this is a very real cause, one I see many, many times in my practice and one that can be, can be very damaging in the long run because just stopping the medication typically does not cause you to lose that weight that you've gained. Inactivity or injury, and this is a very important thing that I work with patients on, when they're picking up a new exercise program. Whatever exercise program you do, it should be one that, that minimizes your chances of becoming injured because an injury is gonna set you back and be worse for you than not exercising at all because it's gonna decrease what we call your NEAT or your non-exercise activity time. And so we want to, to, to try to keep you as healthy, keep you as move, moving as much as we can throughout the day um, and avoid inactivity or injury. Processed foods are the worst in terms of weight regain. They're, they're bad for two reasons. Number one is they typically contain large amounts of processed carbohydrates which are rapidly absorbed. But even more, more of a problem is they have other chemicals, other tastes, other marketing tactics that are used that trigger food addictions. And resuming old food addictions for processed foods after surgery can result in significant weight regain. And finally, yo-yo dieting is a major, major um, contributor to weight regain over the long run. And I, I work with all my patients postoperatively. If we're trying to lose weight, we never try to, to adjust our lifestyle in a way that we don't believe is sustainable. It's almost impossible to maintain a six or 800 calorie a day diet over the rest of your life. So I say don't start it out, it's don't start out trying that in the first place. Rather, pick out things that you think you can accomplish. Work in a meaningful step-by-step -step fashion to improve the quality of your diet rather than try to go on some crash diet to lose weight over a quick period of time to kind of get back to where you were at the best moment after surgery. So preventing weight regain is about eating lots and lots of high-quality food 
not about starving yourself. And again, that's a very important concept for post-surgical patients to grasp. Portion control as a long-term strategy for weight maintenance after surgery is flawed because of the increase that we see in your appetite over time. That two bites of pizza turns to half a piece of pizza, turns to one piece of pizza, turns to two, and then three pieces of pizza. This is an inevitable event that will happen if we don't change the quality of your diet. So when you're eating after surgery, you have to focus on eating foods that will never cause weight gain. How much weight will you gain if you eat one pound of spinach every day? How about two pounds, three pounds? We all know intuitively that if you ate two or three pounds of spinach a day, you would probably lose a ton of weight. And there are absolutely tons of foods out there that the more of them you eat, the thinner you become, and these are the foods we need to focus our diet on. We have our smartphone app that I use with my patients in my office that allows them to measure not the quantity of calories that they're consuming, but rather the quality of the calories. We call it calo ratio because it measures the ratio of the calories that you consume from good sources, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, beans, to the, the, the calories you consume from processed food. And we want to keep that number around 80 or 90 percent. I'll have more videos that go into more detail about how to use calo ratio either after surgery or for those patients who aren't interested in, in surgery and, and their attempts to lose weight. I have at the bottom of the slide um, a spectrum of foods that, that will work to cause weight loss versus those that cause weight gain. Um, at, at the very end, you see vegetables. These are foods that no, the more of them you eat, the more weight you will lose. The other end, we see processed foods, meats and dairies, and grains. These are foods that we have to avoid if, we're go if we want to be able to maintain our weight loss over time. People have a very different reaction to surgery. Some patients may be able to tolerate small amounts of these foods at the far end of the spectrum that cause weight gain and still not, uh, um, still not uh, trigger weight gain in, their, in themselves. However, other patients will have to eat very, very well after surgery. So the program that I put all my patients on is our Pound of Cure Eating Plan, which is based on my book, which is available on Amazon. Another way to maintain your weight after surgery, and I think this is equally as critical to the nutrition, although when, when you're losing weight, nutrition really is the, is the driving factor, but when we're maintaining weight, exercise is, is at least equal, if not more important to good nutrition. But it's not just get on the treadmill for 20 minutes at a low rate. It's about building muscle and using it. This is not for everyone. And when I talk to my patients who are 60 or 65 years old awaiting a knee replacement, we don't discuss CrossFit and other high intensity exercise. It's just not a realistic option for this patient. So this is something you'll have to speak with your physician or your surgeon about before you, you entertain this type of, of activity. But the impact of your workup is going to be driven by the intensity more so than the duration. I am a huge fan of body weight exercises, push-ups, sit-ups, squats, lunges, things that don't use any extra, active, uh, extra equipment because number one, they're widely available. You can do these in your, in your bedroom, in your living room without any additional cost. Number two, they're very injury resistant. You're going to have a l much lower rate of injury if you're doing a push-up as compared to if you're um, uh, doing a, a bench press with a barbell. So they're safer. Um, the things that can be done every day. In general, when I talk to patients about either cardio or weight training, I really try to talk about a hybrid of both. You should develop an elevated heart rate through weight or body weight training. So for me, it wouldn't be about doing 10 push-ups, then resting, then doing 10 sit-ups, then resting, then doing 10 squats, then resting. It would be doing 10 push-ups, then 10 squats, then 10 sit-ups, repeating that two or three times over. You can imagine if you just keep going with that over about four or five minutes, you will be really whipped at the end of this, out of breath and exhausted. And because of that, you'll, you'll be able to, you're going to get to the cardio workout and you're also building the muscle and using it at a maximal intensity. So in summary, all weight loss surgery patients will experience a progressive increase in their appetite after surgery. This is expected. From my mind, this gives us an opportunity to ingest more vegetables, more fruits, more of these healthy foods that are going to keep you well-nourished throughout your life. 
The idea of you eating three bites of food for the rest of your life, to me that's terrifying. You'll develop severe malnutrition and die. That's not what we want and that's not what happens. Patients will increase their appetite. This is normal and expected and not something we should shy away from. It's something that we should welcome because it's going to give us an opportunity, more of the food that's going to nourish us and, and keep us in great shape. Don't worry about your stomach stretching. Worry about falling into the same traps that brought you into your surgeon's office in the first place. This is the most important focus of, uh, in terms of your post-operative lifestyle changes. If you have a certain way of life, certain way of eating, certain way of exercising, then you have the surgery, and then you revert exactly back to that same way of life, you will regain weight at the same rate that you were before surgery. And in the long run, you're not going to maximize the opportunity that the surgery provides. And as I've said in other videos, weight loss surgery is a once in a lifetime opportunity. The revisions that we're able to offer, although sometimes can be helpful, they really do not offer the same bang for the buck that the first surgery does. So this is one single chip that everyone has and you can only cash it in once and when you do you have to make sure you get the most of it and that means a significant and major change in your lifestyle after surgery. I want you to focus on eating lots of high nutrient food not on, on eating a small amount of food. It's about quality not quantity of calories and finally exercise with intensity rather than focusing on low intensity long duration movements. Thank you.